Hi, my name is Tim Bailey and I'm with Cobb and I'm here today at D-Sport to tune their Project R35 for California 91 octane, high octane race 100 and very popular ethanol E85 so we're hoping to make some good power and uh, make the D-Sport car as fast as we can. So what we've done here today for the, the D-Sport Project R35 is a custom tune and Cobb has qualified pro tuners around the globe who can do the same kinds of things that I've done here today. But not everybody, unfortunately, has access to a dyno and a qualified tuner. So recognizing that, the way the Cobb Access Port works is that we, they're set up with a bunch of tune files that work for really common configurations. So chances are, if your car is lightly modified or not modified at all, if you buy an access port, it actually recognizes what kind of car you have, what year, and then pulls up the maps that you can use. You pick your tool, you flash it on, you're good to go. And there are lots of different supported configurations. So custom tunes are the way to get the perfect tune for your car, but uh, we really support everybody, even without access to a dyno, with our off-the-shelf maps. This is a very minimally modified car. The things that have been done to this car, an enhanced fuel system, so it's got fuel pumps, it's got larger injectors, 1,000 cc injectors from ID. The stock injector is only 570 cc's. It also has a larger intake system, so the mass airflow sensors can record a larger amount of airflow. The stock intakes are only 2.75 inches across the diameter, and on stock turbos, they'll actually saturate the mass airflow sensor. It's a zero to five volt sensor, and at max power, that sensor is completely maxed out at nearly five volts. So D-Sport had to increase the cross-sectional area of the intake system to three inches, which gives us good airflow characteristics, and this car run a maximum of 4.6 to 4.7 volts, so we're working within the working range of the mass airflow sensor. And this is a mass airflow sensor-based tune. It's not a speed density-based tune. So this car actually works by directly measuring the airflow, and then it fat calculates how much to open the injectors. So big changes are larger injectors, fuel pumps, intakes, and factory pipes, and it has an exhaust system. So the first test today was with California 91 octane fuel, and California fuels are famous for being pretty low quality, but the R35 motor is a fantastic motor, great pumping efficiency, and it will manage to make great power even on 91 octane. So we used our access port, tuned for multiple boost levels, and the best we're able to do on this car, on this dyno, was 558 horsepower and about 544 foot-pounds of torque at the wheels, considering that this car made between 440 and 460 stock, so that's a considerable increase on 91 octane. So for our second test here at D-Sport, we decided to change the fuels to 100 octane. So we switched out the 91 octane for a very high quality 100 octane fuel. And with the 100 octane fuel, we were able to adjust timing, ignition timing, air fuel ratios that are normally pretty conservative to account for the California fuel quality. We are able to bump those up to more optimal, lean the car out, add more ignition timing, add some more boost, and at only about a pound more boost on the 100 octane, we are able to make 593 horsepower and 587 foot-pounds. So our last test for this D-Sport project car was tuning for E85, uh, ethanol-based fuel, high ethanol content. It's famous in the uh, tuning world right now because it's a pump fuel that's very, very high octane, 105 octane, but the beautiful thing about ethanol is it burns really slow. You're able to control combustion. There's a lot of fuel volume there, so it helps to cool down the motor. Uh, E85 is just the perfect uh, power producer. It also has a lot more latent energy. You can get a lot more exhaust energy with the ethanol-based fuels. So our final step in tuning this car was to drain all the fuel out, which is critically important because you want to keep the ethanol content as close to ideal as possible. Because if we leave in a bunch of pump fuel, it's not going to be E85, it's going to be E70. The tricky thing for tuning for ethanol is that it takes a lot more fuel volume to produce the same kinds of power. The stoichiometry of ethanol is such that it requires about 30% more volume compared to pump fuel for the same kind of power. So we really had to lean on our fuel system. So the upgraded injectors, which are 1,000 cc's, and the upgraded fuel pumps were absolutely required for ethanol-based um, tuning. So we added just a tiny bit more boost compared to our 100 octane. Again, we optimized the air-fuel ratios for ethanol, 
and we came up with 633 horsepower and about 632 foot-pounds. Similar cars that have been tuned like this, similar ones that I've just done very recently, have gone mid to low 10s, 137, 138 miles per hour with full weight. So other cars with this kind of power that have been subject to some weight reductions can do high miles. Pretty amazing for this fuel. The second point of this test was to demonstrate how the fuel system is really heavily utilized by these ethanol-based fuels using approximately 30% more fuel volume. This car has 6,000 cc injectors that we use nearly 95% of that injector for the ethanol testing. So we're using a ton of fuel in this car. Of course, one of the things that's often forgotten on these newer cars is many of them have a saddle type of tank. In other words, they have one compartment on one side of the drivetrain and then a compartment on the other side of the drivetrain. And the fuel pumps themselves contain, they pump fuel from one side to the other with a siphoning mechanism. That siphoning mechanism works off the return line from the pump. So these are return-based fuel systems. So the extra fuel that comes back from the engine bay runs through a little venturi, which creates a suction, which pulls fuel from the other side. So we have to be really careful when you drain the fuel from these cars. You might think, well, you just pull the return line and let the car run. You actually can't do that because you're left with one half of the tank completely empty, and because the siphon didn't work, the other half is completely full. So what we're going to show you today is a little bit of something that uses, that maintains the siphoning system to allow you to get all the fuel out of the car. This is a little, basically it's like a pressure valve to maintain a certain amount of pressure on the return line. This is a Walbro 255 attached to GM flux fuel sensor with a Z-Tronics gauge on the top. I'm going to plug this into the car, the ethanol content will come out of there. We started off with the 85 so even with our best efforts to get E85 in the, five in the tank, we only ended up with about E79 to E80. If we hadn't used the siphon mechanism to drain the tank, we would have ended up with a much, much lower ethanol content. So this is acceptable, not ideal. After a tank or two, it'll approach E85, and when it finally gets there, the car will be a little bit leaner. That's okay. That's good. No knock. Awesome.